Hey everyone, I wanted to share with you today a mixed media tutorial using several of Jane Davenport's new products. I have been playing with this line ever since it came out in January and I am just absolutely obsessed with it, if you couldn't tell by all my video uploads. And right now I am using her 9x12 blank canvas journal and it has a watercolor paper in it, really nice textured paper on one side and smoother on the other, like um, a lot of watercolor papers are. And basically I'm just using a technique that I've been playing around with quite a bit lately, which is tinted gesso. So I usually will take some of her mermaid marker ink and just drop a couple of drops of whatever color into the gesso. And in this case I used her color Deep Sea. Now I'm using her magic wands and outlining the beginnings of a face and I knew that I wanted this to be a Victorian woman and she ended up be taking a little bit of a darker turn um, as I started to sketch the face and uh, with the purple background and everything, uh, I think maybe because I was creating this at night, I just sort of started thinking, hmm, I think I want her to be a vampire. So you'll see that develop. So basically, I just sketched out her face um, and I've referred to this in other videos, but I always, now that I've been doing faces for a little while, I think of the the beginning of the face, the first sketch, as a starting point rather than an end point because I, while I often use colored pencil to sketch the face, I know that I can alter it, so if there's some detail about it that I don't like or I feel like it's uneven, uh, I, I just kind of go into it with that mindset and it makes me a little bit less nervous now about just starting the sketch. So basically I'm just going over her face with some white acrylic paint that is going to dry matte, which if you are a Jane fan, uh, she is a big proponent of white or of uh, acrylic paint being matte because it is so easy to work with with mixed media, easier than the glossier paints. So in this case I used one of her recommended brands called Ceram Coat and that is because I think in her acrylic paints she doesn't yet have a white paint and I wanted uh, this girl to definitely have a ghostly appearance and uh, once I decided on the vampire thing I thought well I'm just going to make it pure white. So because of the tinted background, I add several layers of the white and I just kind of wait for it to dry in between and luckily with acrylic paint it dries fairly fast. And now I'm just playing around with some washi tape that has Victorian frames on it. And I was really thinking as I was putting down these pieces how much I like washi tape in general, but one of the reasons is because it's repositionable since the stickiness is not super sticky and you're not going to tear your paper or anything if you take it off. So I'm just kind of arranging it and seeing if I can come up with sort of a pleasing pattern. And then I just put some gel medium into the palette there and I'm going over it so that it will become permanent and it'll stay glued to the page. So I go in with a few extra layers and since I had Played around a little bit with some washi tape in a previous mixed media piece. I know that I can also paint over it at some point if I want to and that does end up happening actually and you'll kind of see as it develops. So 
I think this is around the point that I ran out of gel medium and I started using clear gesso, which is a really good stand-in. I love working with clear gesso, by the way. It's, it's one of my favorite uh, mixed media tools and um, it just has a lot of different uses. So now I'm just using Jane's Magic Wands. Now I'm painting again, but I was using uh, one of her blue colors to define the face a little bit more and kind of outline her blouse and hair a little more. And I just kept kind of playing with the paint and the Magic Wands to get the amount of whiteness versus shadow. So now I'm using a Posca pen, and if you're not familiar with these pens, they are acrylic paint pens. Uh, they're very high quality, I, I really enjoy using them. And now I'm using one of Jane's paint over pens. This is the color, let's see, I want to say it's called Mermaid. I'll double check on that. And then I'm going in with a black Posca pen to outline the iris of the eyes. Or I guess it's the pupil. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember my eye anatomy right now. And one of the most helpful things I've found when working on a face is to stop and take pictures throughout the process and um, a lot of times, because when you're working on a face, you get very close to the face, so to speak, and you can kind of miss the forest for the trees. So I will usually snap a few pictures throughout and see what it looks like through a camera's eye and look at it and then make adjustments as I go. So like her left eye, uh, which is, on the right side to us um, was looking a little bit off like it's a little bit larger um, so I, I do go ahead and adjust that and then right now I'm using her deep sea mermaid marker and one of her aqua brushes I really like the thick aqua brush the fine detail one is nice too but I'm really loving the thick one. I've noticed I've been using it quite a bit. And I'll tell you, uh, when you're using the mermaid markers, especially if you start diluting them with water, right now it looks, the color looks very, very saturated, but because I use gesso underneath, and you'll see this happen once it dries, a lot of that intensity is going to go away. And uh, if I had just gone on to watercolor paper uh, without the gesso, uh, it would have retained a lot of that color, but you'll see in some of the next shots, like once it's dry, it changes quite a bit. So I did kind of dab at some areas. So uh, these are her collage papers. She calls it her collage papers. They're actually tissues or napkins. Um, serviettes they're also called and uh, this at this point I had switched over to the clear gesso and I've talked about this in other videos but the collage tissues are two ply and you can separate one ply from the other and sometimes I'm better at this than at other times sometimes I can get it to separate and other times I just cannot 
get it to separate because they're so delicate. Um, so some of the pieces that I put down in this piece do end up um, being the two ply and this one I was able to get the top layer. And the advantage to just getting the top layer is that any white of the tissue will fade into the background. So you can hear a little ruckus in the background. This is my dog Kona uh, making a little spot for herself. Uh, okay, so over here on the left, um, you can see I'm getting some nice wrinkling with the paper. And then I just um, ended up gluing some of the tissue onto the back side of that page. Now I'm using a Prima stencil and it has a really cute doily pattern. Um, now, at first when I started out this page, I was just gonna go with the left page, but then I realized I wanted to extend it. And so now I'm gessoing that right page and the gesso is ever so tinted with just a touch of lavender. It still had a little bit of that mermaid marker ink in it. So I thought that added a nice touch. And then I went over the washi tape with some of the gesso. Um, I felt like the yellow of the gesso tape or the washi tape was just popping out a little bit too much and I just wanted to kind of whiten it out a little bit and make it blend better. And then I had actually cleaned off her mermaid marker over there on the right side and I just gesso over that and as you can see the gesso will pull some of that color. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue down some more of the washi tape and end up doing the same thing with the gesso where I go over it and whitewash it a little bit and make it blend a bit better. It made me realize I would really like to find a um, washi tape that's clear that has um, printed designs on it. I'm going to be on the lookout for that or maybe figure out a way to make my own. So now I'm just extending her blouse over to the right page. Now I'm using some Liquitex modeling paste. It's pretty thick. And if I had just left it on its own, I think it would have retained even more thickness, but I did add several drops of deep sea and I wanted to get a really, really deep purple color to kind of keep the purple theme going. And just went ahead and brushed that into the doily part of the stencil. And I haven't worked with modeling paste a whole lot, so this was pretty experimental for me. Um, once it dried, I was thrilled with it. At first I thought, well, how is this really different than maybe coloring gesso or something and stenciling from that? But the texture that came from it is coarse, almost like a sand-like texture, and it definitely is more raised off the page than gesso would have been. And later on, when I start to uh, apply some deco art media on top of these stenciled bits, the raised part of it really starts to show its potential. And I'll definitely be experimenting more with modeling paste now that I'm getting more comfortable with it. So these are more of Jane's serviettes and I went for the smaller color swatches this time. The ones on the left are the kind of the larger ones that look like they might be in a large watercolor palette and these are the kind of the smaller watercolor palette looking serviettes. I believe this piece was one ply and a couple of the pieces ended up being both plies. So we'll see if you can kind of tell the difference. It's not, the whiteness is not going to be as noticeable on the right side because the background is such a pale purple. 
Yeah, see, this is the one that I really struggled to try to get those plies apart and I just couldn't, so I went ahead and just glued it down and then, um, but see how the one above it just literally blends onto the paper as though it were painted there because the white completely disappears. And at this point I was basically just kind of experimenting and, you know, kind of figuring out different spots for the napkins to go and keeping with like a very cool toned color palette. And to be honest, the right page, I just never quite got it to a point where I was super happy with it, but I figured just, you know, keep experimenting. It's an art journal page, no big deal. And this time I decided to use some of the, the back ply of some of the uh, collage paper that I had torn apart. Um, some of them were stained with some of the inks. And I did that not only to take down some of the color a little bit, but of the background, but I also wanted to get more texture and wrinkles. I saw someone do this, I believe on Facebook, something called serendipity papers, and they, did this technique where they used tissue paper um, with a base color on it and then rubbed some sort of media on top of it and this is what I'm attempting to do here with the, the deco art. Okay so this is deco arts metallic luster and it's in the color gold rush. Uh, it's very similar to Inca gold. Um, Prima I think has these now you know, kind of this beeswax uh, metallic paste. Um, I've seen a lot of companies now that have them. So anyway, I, uh, I thought I'd try it out and just kind of see if I could get that serendipity effect. And it didn't look like what I had seen on Facebook, but again, I figured experimental, why not? Uh, the one thing I did really like, and I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but the Gold Rush, I really liked how it went over the modeling paste. There are certain areas where it just added this kind of brush of color that I thought looked really neat. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, I would love to hear them. Um, if you have any suggestions for any types of mixed media you'd like to see, I would love to hear that too. I'm always looking for new ideas, so I'd love to hear any ideas you might have. And I will see you next time. Alright, bye-bye.